Let's go next to my poly panel for the day, Liberal MP Jason Valinsky from the Labor Party. Patrick Gorman, gentlemen, thanks both for your time as ever. Fascinated to hear John Barilaro take some questions today, Jason Falinski, on uh, how he voted at the 2019 election, whether or not even he preferenced the Labor Party, had the Liberal Party, and he, he wouldn't answer. He said it's a private matter. Did that strike you as odd at all? Oh, no. Um, John is mercurial at the best of times, so it doesn't surprise me that... Um, he won't answer those sorts of questions. Uh, he, he likes to keep the media guessing. It's just going to keep everyone guessing, though, isn't it, when there are reports today that he's unofficially, quietly, whatever you want to say, telling people to vote the Nationals, then Labor, then the Liberal, Liberal Party to clear the way for him to get the seat, maybe the next federal election. Yeah, listen, Tom, but, I mean, you know, this is a bit of a distraction. You've had him on this morning. He's told you that it's untrue. The article says there's no evidence to that effect. Um, it just seems to me like sort of more smear and fear because whoever is running on the other side of John wants to make sure that uh, the people of Eden Monero are distracted from the real issues, which is what party is going to deliver better services, better infrastructure, more hope, more opportunity for the people of Eden Monero after the by-election. And I, I think that's the key question that is facing people, not uh, a question about whether John Barilero mm. didn't say something that he's denied he didn't say. So, you know, really, let's let's get back to the issues, I think. All right. Well, just to, just to clarify, he was holding a news conference, uh, so we brought some of that to our viewers in the interest of... Uh, showing people what was going on. Uh, but is John Barilaro himself still a distraction in this campaign? Um, I don't think he's a distraction. I think that he's a distraction for the media. He's not a distraction for the people of Eden Monero and he's not a distraction for us. Mm. Interested in your thoughts, Patrick Gorman, on some very low expectation setting from Anthony Albanese. He, Labor Party is the bookie's favourite. Uh, we've got 100 years of history in terms of a government not taking a seat off the opposition in a by-election, and yet he still thinks, well, remember Scott Morrison was ahead. Is he worried about losing this seat? Well, that's a question. The result is a question for the people of Eden Monero to decide on Saturday evening. Um, but this is the most extraordinary by-election that we have seen in recent history. Uh, it is in the middle of a pandemic. We have states of emergency declared across the country uh, people are unable to campaign in their traditional ways, and that includes the Liberal Party. And we're now seeing in the last sort of hours of this campaign it kind of going back to what it started, which is this weird John Barilaro sideshow. Um, and the sideshow that sort of keeps on giving, where he can't even tell us who he preferenced. Um, look, I'll, I'll tell you that, uh, you know, I voted for the Labor Party and uh, I followed the Labor Party ticket, which is the uh, normal were, thing... Were that you the candidate that you voted for, Pat? Do. Uh, yeah, I do live in my electorate, Jason, and I did vote for myself. And uh, So you voted for yourself? You know, <laughs> yes, I did. Uh, and, uh, well, I'm sure Patrick Gorman would reveal what he did in a state election, said. though, too. Oh, that that's a good I'm question. Yeah. I'm, I'm, it doesn't involve I'm, you. I'm, I'm, a very, uh, I'm a very disciplined person. Uh, I follow the party ticket, and I'm surprised that the leader of the National Party in New South Wales won't even say whether he followed his own party's how to vote card. That is an do extraordinary... Do you follow your party's ticket, Jason Falinski? Uh, yes, I do, um, uh, Tom, I do, yes. Sorry. See, it's easy. Right. Even so Jason can answer John that Barilaro question. I mean, surely John Barilaro <laughs> could have as well. Yeah, but John, look, John's one of these guys who likes to keep the media interested, throws a bit of red meat out there. I mean, this is just all part of his, um, you know... Is, is this really helping? Well, well really trotted media strategy. Just on the strategy. edge of a by-election? Is this, uh, Sorry, is this what you call helping out? Is this what you have, call helping out the coalition? Just uh, 48 hours from polls opening? Well, look, I mean, you know, it's distracted the media. Um, the fact of the matter is that we're continuing to focus on the issues that matter to the people of Eden Monero in the last 24 hours. How, how long have we actually got now? 48 hours? Last 48 hours? Um, and we'll just, uh, you know, we'll keep doing that until election day. So I think on, that's... Let me, let me just, look, people, people of Eden Monero... Let me just walk through don't... this, Jason Walensky. You're saying yeah, yeah, he's distracting not. the media. People watch yes, the media, they consume it for better or worse, and the media is talking about John Barlaro instead of the issues you are say you're focusing on. So doesn't no, that I think mean that, he's not no, doing Tom, the right think, thing by the coalition? No, I think the media is talking about John Barilaro. I don't think that the people of Eden Monero are. Only because I mean, they're, they're, they're more concerned... I mean, he didn't sorry. give an emphatic denial today about the story mm. in terms of um, 
exactly what yep, so that's that. so that's given you something more to he'll be voting yep. number one trevor hicks then the yep. coalition second when he was mm -hmm. asked about whether he encouraged anyone else he said there are going to be members on the ground they'll say and do as they please he didn't exactly knock yep. it on the head well look but this is what he does so you're still talking about john the people of Eden Monero want to talk about who's going to give them better services and i think you know this is the problem with modern politics with all due respect to everyone involved in modern politics, which is we just love talking about ourselves so much when people want us to talk about them. You know, the electorate wants us to serve them. Right. Um, and I think, you know, we've already this morning, we've spent more time on John Barrolero than on the issues that are concerning ordinary right. Australians and definitely the people of Eden Monero. Well, I'm pleased to let our viewers know as well, he will be on our panel on election night coverage on Saturday. So if unlike Jason Falinski, you like it when John Barrolero has a bit to say and makes the whole political scene a little bit more colourful. Yeah. Tune in on Saturday evening. He'll be there. Uh, Patrick Gorman, I'm not letting you escape though, Anthony Albanese. Surely if amidst all the consternation around the bushfire response in this electorate and the history on Labor's side, if this seat is lost, there have to be conversations, don't there, about Labor's approach right now and whether that's getting through to voters. I think what you just outlined is true, which is this electorate uh, we're not talking about the outcomes across the entire country. We're talking about the outcomes in this particular electorate, which has had drought, bushfire, now coronavirus pandemic. It is a pretty unique situation. And uh, I think people on all sides of politics, even in sort of some of the uh, convoluted uh, defence of John Barillaro that Jason had in there, recognise that this is an election about the people of Eden Monero. Um, and of course, we know that uh, by-elections don't always reflect the outcome of the next general election, and that's what I'm focused on, winning the next general election. Um, but I but was on the phone with Christian McBain. I was on the, I with say, all those no, issues. Uh, I should say, on. I was on the phones for Christy McBain last night, uh, talking to people in the Eden Monero. Uh, I walked out of uh, doing two hours of phone banking, feeling incredibly optimistic about Labor's chances. It is a tough election, but All people right. have So you're a lot more confident her... than Anthony Albanese, it talks like? Well, uh, I, based on the calls I made last night, uh, people recognise that she is a local who has stood up for her community time and time again. Uh, that's the sort when of... She put, when she put their rates up by 8%. Like, I mean, this well, is what we get from Labor candidates all the time. Jason, yeah. You know, in the, middle, Jason. in the middle of a pandemic, in the middle of a drought, in the middle of um, bushfires, her contribution was to put up rates by 8%. If you want to talk about putting up taxes, let's talk about the fact that yet again, and we've debated this on this program before, yet again the Liberal Party are looking to increase the GST to 15%. Every time there's an economic challenge in this country, the Liberal Party says, oh, well, the obvious solution is to increase the GST. And now you're looking at putting a knowledge tax on people in Eden Monero by putting a GST on their education. Uh, so if you want to talk about who's got a plan for higher taxes at this election, it's the New South Wales Liberal Party. And uh, we know that where the New South Wales Liberal Party goes, uh, the economic policies of the federal coalition follow. Uh, yeah, I'll just uh, get you each on this topic now that we've moved on to it so seamlessly. Uh, Jason Falinski, <laughs> this idea pushed out by the New South Wales government, I should urge, but, you know, it's one that economists like. It's a good tax that's hard to avoid. It's efficient and so on. Is there any appetite for listening to that clamour from people that say this would be a good idea for tax re reform? Do you have any boldness to go up against the scare campaign that's ready and waiting there on Patrick Gorman's side? Uh, well, um, Tom, the, the fact of the matter is that Australia has some long-term issues around creating economic hope and opportunity for our people. Primarily, this can be summarised in the issue of productivity. One of the biggest drivers of productivity is having an efficient and fair tax system. Australia's tax system is neither fair nor efficient. What the New South Wales government, through Dominic Perrottet, has proposed and David Thody has proposed is not increasing taxes, as um, Patrick is putting uh, forward. It is proposing changing our tax mix so that it is fairer and more efficient. What Kirsten McBain did in Bega was simply put up um, taxes with no reform attached to it, an inefficient tax to spend, you know, to spend on more wasteful services that no, that do no good for anyone. Um, the difference between what Dominic Perrottet is proposing is reforming our tax system, not increasing taxes, but making so them fairer and more efficient. So do you back, what are you saying there? I know it's a big reform package. 
as part of that GST, land tax, um, stamp duty, all these types of things to be looked at. Do, yeah. do you back Look, we have to get... It doesn't we, seem like the, the, the federal government wants to have that conversation. Oh, um, Tom, we're up for this conversation more than you would be, believe, because if the one thing that the pandemic has demonstrated is that we cannot afford to be second best anymore. Um, we have the it's 16th most efficient... You're up for that conversation. This is including... This is including people can look, be done. we should take... Yeah, sorry, Tom. No, no, sorry. Yeah, I'm just meaning up for that conversation, including trying to drive a discussion around increasing the GST, of course, helping out lower income earners, but, but increasing the GST, you're up for that discussion? Well, look, the, um, uh, the, tre the Treasurer and the Prime Minister have made it clear that they are not inclined to increase uh, the rate of the GST. That doesn't mean that there isn't a lot of scope for reform within the GST. Um, I do, however, own, you know, the two most inefficient taxes in Australia's tax mix at the moment that do more damage and more harm than any others are stamp duty, especially on land transfers and payroll tax. Reform of those two taxes are critical mm. and are something that the federal government um, All right. look, you know, well, we need to pursue. Yeah. And I would hope, and I would hope, quite frankly, in the interest of fairness, if nothing else, that um, that would have bypassed. Okay, I've, I've got to jump. I'm going to jump Sorry. in because we're nearly out of time, Patrick Gorman. This is a, a you can do holistic tax reform that compensates those lower income earners, for example, on the GST, that gets rid of things or reduces payroll tax. Is Labor up for that discussion at all? Well, uh, the taxes that Jason just outlined are state taxes. So if Jason wants to jump into state politics with John Barillaro, uh, then uh, I'm sure that he'd be very welcome uh, because he too is a very entertaining character and it seems to be the prerequisite for... Uh, I'm, I'm not sure I'm as entertaining as John. Uh, <laughs> but uh, on the question of the GST, I mean, what Jason just said there with some pretty... Uh, pretty like, you know, very clever... Uh, John Howard would be proud of how uh, Jason just handled that interview, which is uh, some pretty clever Stop words... Stop with the compliments, they, that is a compliment. Um, I know. <laughs> they might start looking at the GST on fresh food. They might start looking at the GST on education. Uh, that's what Jason just said. That is, for me, a red line. All right. You cannot increase the GST on essentials like education and fresh food. All right. Well, I've hit the red line. I'm getting a hard rap, as you guys know it's called in the business. We'll talk in a couple of weeks. Jason, Patrick, thank you. Thanks, Thank you. Thanks, Thank you, Patrick. Love, that is six.